Hello there YouTube, Super Brain AK here, and well, I told you I'd be testing some power supplies soon, as soon as I got my stuff, and well, I have one of two items, technically three, but the other one isn't for, the third one is not for power supplies. This one and the other one will are. So this... I don't know if you guys have been looking on AliExpress all that much, but this is the 150 watt, um, 60 volt, 10 amp DC load, electronic load, and it's actually pretty impressive. Uh, I'm gonna show you the product page now on AliExpress. Okay, so you can see whoop all the way up here. So 150 watt constant current electronic load 60 volt 10 amp battery tester discharge capacity tester meter 12 24 48 lead acid lithium. So yeah, that's a mouthful. Uh I'm not sure if this is the exact seller that I ordered from because when I click on the link it gives me a 404 error but basically they're all pretty much the same this one has 267 orders so it's fairly popular I'm pretty sure I went with the one with the highest orders and so far this one is the one um, but yeah so it's about 29 something for it uh, Pretty sure I had some sort of little discount. But yeah. It's got a couple little pictures here. Tells you little buttons and also it shows you uh uh whoops. Oh dear. Let's go back. Come on. Okay, that was weird. Alright, so yeah, so it shows you the um, uh, chips there under the LCD, so this looks like it's got a little, couple little amplifiers, op amps, and uh, I don't know, I think it says in the description that it has its own ADC, independent 18-bit ADC chip right there. Uh, 15 ppm voltage benchmark I'm not sure what that means but very accurate very yeah very high accuracy so yeah 60 volt 10 amp 150 watt very precise uh, so it has to have two separate power supplies a bunch of different voltage or settings and a couple pictures and whatever to show you the connections but yeah it's more interesting on the actual device so let's get back to it okay so yeah it's got pretty good construction I think you can see there under there it has all the components for the back just lined up in a nice row. Uh, I can't get the light in there. That's annoying. Yeah, you can see them all right there. So yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. Same on this side. See them, they're just all lined up right there. Which I can't say is the best thing because all the wires are then going back and around and to the different components, but at least the layout is good. Probably cheaper for the thing. So, pull it around to the back of it, and you can see DC input jack, the fan connector for the fan, uh, LCD contrast, little buzzer, 
And here is the four wire uh, power connection. It's got amp amperage plus, voltage plus, voltage minus, amperage minus. So these two are carrying the current, these two measure the voltage. So what I did is I took some wire here, I took two bits of fairly flexible uh, 18 gauge wire, and then a thing of shielded wire, which is pretty small, it's probably like 26, 28 gauge. Well, at least the center conduit is like 28. That outer conduit, the shielding is probably, uh, I don't know, 24, 22. But yeah, so I took one of those, and because it's shielded, there's no way for inductance to go on it. So what I did, I took the positive, which is the center, to the positive side, then the negative, which is the outside, and then the two current connections, which is that 18 gauge wire, and then zip tied it, brought it all the way along, along down here, and then used uh, electrical tape, spun around, and sort of twisted it, twisted the three wires, and then added a ferrite bead to it to protect from EMI. So it's very accurate, very low noise, and pretty awesome. That's my little cable that I made, which is working pretty well so far. And yeah, um, one thing I'm pretty cool or uh, excited about is that the fact that this is an actual, like, CPU heatsink. You would find this on a computer, and it's by Cooler Master, at least the fan is. So, yeah, that's awesome. But, you, there you can see the current shunt underneath it there, starting here. Goes all the way over. From there to up there. And you can see the three connections for the MOSFET. And there is the little NTC, uh, temperature sensor. I would like to see like less um, thermal pad around it, so that way it tracks quicker with the MOSFET, but eh, gives it a little more thermal mass, so that way it's not bouncing the fan on and off all the time. But yeah, so the MOSFETs is there, uh, it's pushed over so it's back is facing up to interface with the heatsink. There you can, there you can see it. So yeah, that, that just, this just clamps onto the board and pushes it and you can kind of see the bend in it, which isn't all that great. But yeah. That's a quick view. Well, I guess I better turn it on, shall I? Plug it in, plug it in. Let's see if we can see this. You cannot see that. Uh, wow. Okay. This thing is not photogenic. Up, oh, up, oh, oh, there you can see. Wow, okay, that's what I thought. The LED on it is super bright. But, yeah. I had, uh, you sort of use the up and down arrows on the left, and then the button in the top right changes where you're going. Then you can change to the voltage, minimum voltage cutout. And go back to the amps. 
so it can do what's that 10 milliamps yeah 10 milliamp increments up to Ten amps. So yeah. So I was running it on my big SEC twelve twenty three, which is this big bad boy, which is basically a car battery and car battery that plugs in. That is, and well, is running it at, at its full ten amps. The fan kicked on at around forty something C. And then at um, 86 or so Celsius, it dropped the current from 10 amps to 7.2 amps, which changed the wattage to around 100 watts. So it can't quite do 150 watts continuous. So if that's what you're looking for, you're going to have to get something a bit beefier or beef up the cooling I don't know make give it a liquid cooler <laughs> it has a CPU heatsink so we could easily add one um but yeah surprisingly after like almost 20 minutes and with me using my hot air gun um I couldn't get my fan on the 1223 to turn on so John 10 sometimes 7.2 amps doesn't isn't isn't enough power but I calculated the efficiency of the power supply to be 93 percent yep instead of 163 watts only 25 watts was wasted so that's 6.54 percent loss so yeah Anyway, guys, I have a box of awesome power supplies to go through. Yeah, you can see that. Got some buck converters from 24-port uh, things. Then, what is this? Okay, 5-volt, 10-amp power supply. Which I'm thinking of converting. And then, yeah. Yeah, what I am interested in is these guys. These, these would be pretty fun. We got quite a few. I don't think I'll be messing with any of these. <laughs> that takes some work to get working. Besides, it probably only give me, like, at most two volts. This was the buck converter for the CPUs out of a, what, $2,600 server? Yeah. That would be fun to play with, but some other time. So, that was a quick overview and uh, look at of the 150 watt uh, electronic load. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.